All right, let's diagnose some channels. My name is Liam and I've allegedly been successful on YouTube. However, on this channel, I always talk about bigger creators. So you know what, let's help some smaller ones. And just a slight disclaimer at the beginning, everyone featured in this video specifically requested that I review their channel. And if you'd like yours reviewed in the future, then you should, you should do the subscribe thing so that you have a better chance of seeing the community post when I do a call out for stuff like this. But we are going to start with our first patient being the Going Merry, which I suppose is pretty obviously a One Piece channel. Just getting in, Ground Zero with 23 current subscribers. And we'll start right there with the name. Channel names, uh, they're simultaneously everything and nothing. A good channel name can tell you all you need to know about the value proposition. For example, let's take Grand Line Review, a terrible example actually. But the words Grand Line and Review together imply that I have a channel based on subjective discussion, analysis, and of course, review of One Piece. The Going Merry, however, doesn't really tell me a whole lot about the channel. I mean, I know it's One Piece related and that, that's a big niche, but that, that's the problem. Because I don't know exactly what the goals of your channel are or what you're proposing to do with it, which I suppose are the same thing, but I said both. Furthermore, the channel banner, it just kind of confuses things because it says Going Merry Podcast and using the P word, that, that's very dangerous, because it can give the expectation of long form chill content, whereas I can see that most of the videos on this channel are under 10 minutes. So with the name, you've successfully branded yourself as a One Piece channel, but you've not successfully told me what kind of channel you are. If that makes sense. I know you're a One Piece channel, but I don't know like specifically what kind kind what it is that you do. So taking a look at thumbnails, they're, they're not actually bad at all for a channel of this size. And I'm especially a big fan of the borders because they make content pop out very, very well. Almost like you're automatically hovering on that video as part of some sort of selection screen. Plus, if you choose a common color scheme, then that color can help build a strong visual identity in conjunction with the border. Now there's a lot of arrows in thumbnails and look, arrows are great. I, I like arrows, I use them a lot. However, these arrows, they are far too thin. They look really weak and flimsy, like they would snap in a light breeze. And generally with text and objects in your thumbnail, you want them to look beefy, strong, and bold because it's a tangible cue of quality. I guess consider it like furniture. A thick block arrow would feel like a nice heavy oak piece of furniture. Whereas a thin arrow, it feels, you know, like a flimsy budget plastic Ikea equivalent. Plus another problem with the thin arrow is that when you're looking at these images in standard thumbnail size, you could just legitimately miss them. Like the purpose of an arrow is to draw attention. So if you can't see the arrow, then that makes it kind of redundant. Similar issue with the text in the thumbnails, it uses the freely available One Piece font, the letters of which are not only, again, thin and flimsy, but also just like shockingly illegible. Looking at some of these thumbnails, I know that people will have a hard time actually reading the text because I had a hard time reading the text due to the, the, the stupid nature of this novelty font. So it's just better to go with something more block, plain and legible. Also, a lot of the recent videos are under five minutes long, which is, it's unfortunately not ideal for YouTube. This platform really emphasizes pushing videos that are eight minutes or more. And it also won't push these videos as YouTube shorts either because that's for content that is 60 seconds or less. So these videos are going to exist in a very kind of awkward space where they're too long to be shorts and they are too short to be longs. In terms of the content itself, the Going Merry audio is, uh, it's not bad at all. It's a bit echoey, but look, I've heard a lot worse for beginner YouTuber channels. Plus he does have this really nice, deep, rich voice. So first off, why did Blackbeard actually attack Drum Island? Because as we know Teach, he doesn't do rec reckless actions. Everything he does is actually planned out beforehand. And I think that if he had a slightly more friendly recording setup with less echo, then that would be a huge, huge selling point. We do need to talk about lighting though, because my dude, this is, it's way too dark. It's at the point where looking at a shot like this for too long might actually cause someone eye strain. So look, the issue is that you need light. And the good news is that's very easy to do. Either you can just literally buy a light and stick it in front of your face, or you might even be able to change the exposure on your camera to allow more light in if your camera has that capability which uh, I don't know if it does. It's probably easier just to buy the light and do the stick. But going merry, here are the main things I want you to work on. One, set up some stuff like behind your mic. Like they could be pillows or blankets or just something soft to limit the echo. Because when you're speaking into a mic, your voice travels that way and it's going to bounce off whatever is there. So if what you've got there is like a flat wall, then it's gonna bounce and bounce and bounce and it's gonna echo like a mofo. Do mofos echo? Probably. Uh, two, get more light on your face. We, we like faces and we don't like darkness. And three, just brighter, blockier, and more legible thumbnail elements. All right, so our next patient is Kev D-O-G or even Kev 
Diog, depending on how you prefer to pronounce it, I don't know. Whose name, of course, implies a One Piece channel, but it is actually split focused, as implied by the banner, which says, talking about whatever I am obsessed with. Which is nice, you know, I like that honesty. It makes the channel seem quite genuine. However, I will say that this is a great cautionary tale of split content though, because this channel has actually seen quite a bit of success with Jojo videos. In fact, the two best performing videos on the channel are oddly specifically about Toru from part eight. And apart from a couple of outliers here and there, the videos that have achieved over a thousand views are pretty much exclusively Jojo, which is good news in a way because bam, Kev Dog has hit an audience here. He's done what every aspiring YouTuber wants to do and what 99% of them never get to, which is tap into an audience. So at this point, I would look for the common threads behind those successful videos because I know that Jojo doesn't automatically equal success. Like there are a fair few lackluster ones in there, but I would find the common threads and push those further because the One Piece content, oh, look, it's just not really working in comparison. And part of that could be because there's a lot of reaction videos and look, I, I cannot stress this enough. If you are a new YouTuber, just stay away from reaction videos. You're probably about five years too late to try and be building a channel off of that. Especially if you're reacting to manga chapters, because look, it's one thing to watch along with someone watching an anime, but it is much more difficult to watch someone reading because everyone reads at different paces. And even if you could see the manga on screen, it's just, it's just not an experience that the YouTube platform is good for exploring. With the videos themselves, eh, the audio is pretty solid. The vocals are nice and warm. There's no echo, which is good, good, good. It's perfectly listenable too. And I did see this though. We don't have a um, cover story this time, sad. I actually really like this cover story. And several of the videos feature a drawn character as an avatar, which is a nice solution to not having to be on camera like, like what I do. Being on camera by its very nature, it's quite cost prohibitive because you do need that initial investment into entry level gear just to compete for people's attention. And there's quite a few videos where Kev does appear on camera and look, honestly, it's not great footage. The shot is overexposed in places because the main source of light is coming from a side window, which is a shame because yes, it lights up the room very brightly, perhaps too bright. But because it's behind Kev, it fails to do much at all to actually light his face. The camera quality is, uh, it's also just too low. Again, the audio, it's fantastic. But if you're going to be on camera in 2022, then you do need to reach a certain standard. Overall for Kev, there's a couple of key takeaways. One, your channel focus is probably too broad. Starting a general channel is just, uh, it's extremely difficult these days. And if I were you, I would really focus on exploring that Jojo niche that you've stumbled upon. And secondly, this might sound harsh, but every chapter reaction you make is probably just adding another weight to pulling your channel deeper and deeper down the, the, the sea of obscurity that is YouTube. Reactions are just not the meta anymore. But good luck because you've, you've already done the impossible by actually finding an audience. So at this point, you do have all the tools you need to move forward. All right, with the next patient, we are taking a slight step up with Sunlight Alliance, a small channel that has broken through with a fairly impressive level of regular views. And in regards to the name, look, I love it. The Sunlight Alliance, it, it feels like a play it is that I want to be. And it also ties very strongly into the themes of One Piece, which is the target niche, so that's double good. Plus it focuses on building a community rather than showcasing an individual. You know, this is the Sunlight Alliance. It's not the ramblings of Mr. Sunlight. So that's really cool. In terms of content, this channel presents a surprisingly mixed bag within a niche. There's a lot of One Piece live action news, reaction mashups, chapter discussions, and even theories. Now, having said what I did about reaction videos previously, look, there is always a time and a place for them. And these in particular are very well timed and I guess sort of well placed. Sunlight Alliance has taken advantage of a very, very key moment within the One Piece fan base, where basically the biggest development thing that's ever happened in 25 years did happen, which led to a lot of hype. And I can understand why reactions to that specific series of events might've done very well. Although I would seriously recommend canning the reaction mashups from now on because that golden moment it's passed and people have just stopped caring as demonstrated by the latest mashup, which is uh, it's not performing the that great. I'd also say there's some very strong branding potential here within the Sunlight Alliance. Like if I were you, I would try to own the color yellow, sort of like the bright popping yellow of your banner. I would make it my mission to include that sunlight as a branding element in every thumbnail. Because honestly, right now, look, the thumbnails are solid. They're, they're good. They're bold and poppy, but there's nothing that really separates them from every other generic One Piece commentator on the platform. Within the videos, the audio is fantastic. We have a very different style of voice here, a much more energetic American. I love one Piece theories. Now, I know that's a pretty bold statement given the title of this video, and I don't want you to feel misled, so let me explain. And the production within the videos is also pretty great. The pacing is quite fast because the elements, they change fairly often to suit what's being said. However,
However, things do risk becoming a bit stale because you're kind of using the same effect over and over again. You know, we zoom in on a picture, then we zoom out on a picture, and we zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. Zoom in. We do that a lot. And this is actually what I used to do on Grand Line Review and look, it got very stale. So I needed to find ways to break up that flow. Whether that was like a blurred moving background or changing it up so that the foreground image was zooming in or out or even just panning on itself. And these days I even use a mix of stock footage, on camera footage and various custom art assets just to keep breaking things up. So I guess a couple of things. Number one, look well done. Uh, you're in a much better place than I was at your size for sure. So take that and make it even better. Build a strong brand around your Sunlight Alliance. Keep pushing the live action news, I think. People seem to really enjoy that from you. And just take your editing to that next level because it's already pretty good, but again, using that same effect over and over for a 10 minute video, it's gonna get a bit tiring. And the next patient is Merch Hunter Ricky, who I wanted to feature because he has a very different adjacent niche that I think is worth exploring. Uh, as per usual, start with the name, it's great. It kind of bridges the gap between that channel mission and personality. Like, you know that this guy, this guy is Ricky and he has a clear mission a mission to hunt merch and also bring us along for the ride, I guess. However, immediately the channel banner, it, it doesn't really help that at all. Like it's all vague merchy stuff. What I would prefer to see is something like Ricky being surrounded by this impressive collection of figures or stuff. And they don't have to be real figures. Like you could just Photoshop a bunch of them in around you because you are the merch hunter and they could just be example of the various targets it is you're hunting. Now, after that first thing, I have to say this channel is absolutely polluted by the litter that is YouTube shorts. To be perfectly honest, uh, there's just, there's no benefit to using shorts right now, in my opinion. They don't help you grow because it's stupidly difficult to actually get featured on the short shelf. And even if they did, they will not help with revenue. Like I know some people who have had millions of views on shorts and they've been paid just over a hundred dollars for the privilege. And more importantly, it's a waste of time and energy. You should focus that time and energy onto what the YouTube platform actually does well, which is mid to long form content. And unfortunately that's where Merch Hunter Ricky really struggles right now because even the non shorts content on average is still like two to three minutes long, which we've already discussed. Those kind of videos between like the two to seven minute mark, they're, they're pretty much dead on arrival for new creators. And obviously Ricky, he, he does have problems elsewhere with titles and thumbnails, but those are skills that can be developed pretty much anywhere because we've got something more important to talk about. Here is the core of what I think Merch Hunter Ricky is missing, which is a clear mission and a format. Like I love the name. I think it has a lot of potential. And here's the sort of thing I think of when I hear the name Merch Hunter Ricky. An eight minute video where Ricky has required some sort of rare or weird piece of anime or even pop culture merch. Because remember, he's a merch hunter. So we're not looking for common crap here. So I want to know how hard it was to get that merch. I want to see it unboxed. And then I want to hear some history or fun facts behind it whilst all of that is happening. And in the end, we should do something cool like adding the item to Ricky's Merch Museum so that with every video, we as the merch hunting community can be working on building something and maybe even develop a character around it and dress like an explorer or set up your merch space like an archeological display. Again, I don't know, there's a lot of things that could be done. What I do know is that right now we're not really getting there because the video is more like, hey guys, bought a thing. It's a banana. So to be honest, I don't think Ricky quite knows what he wants to do with this channel. I think he definitely knows he wants to make content and he also knows vaguely what he wants to make content about, but he doesn't know exactly what his mission is because Ricky has answered the what, the where and the who, but he's missing the why and the how, especially the why. The why is like the most important question. So Mr. Ricky, the key thing that you need to solve before anything else is the mission of your channel. Just give me a one sentence answer, something very clear like, to discover and display rare pop culture merch from around the world. Whatever it is, come up with that and build your channel around it. After that point is when we can talk about stuff like camera quality, titles, thumbnails, and all of this stuff. Uh, but yeah, I actually had a lot of fun reviewing and analyzing all those channels. And if you did as well, let me know by, by pressing buttons. And uh, if you press enough of them, then I might do more.